to start our installation of the coil springs, we have the rear wheels blocked. We've got the safety stands underneath the frame. We've jacked up the front underneath the cross member to we have about four to six inches of clearance underneath our front tire. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the wheel off. We're going to go ahead and remove the cotter pin on the outer tie rod end. Take the tie rod end loose. Break the taper loose. Remove the tie rod. Okay, now we'll go ahead and take the nut loose on the lower ball joint. And we want to leave this nut threaded on here securely so that when we break this taper loose, we've got the sway bar, the ball joint, and the shock still holding the control arm from coming apart. Let's go ahead and tie this tie rod up out of the way so we've got more room to work here. Okay, now that we've got the taper loose, we'll go ahead and put a floor jack underneath the control arm. And I like to kind of hook them right here on this flange piece so they can't slide out from underneath of the control arm. And next we'll go ahead and pull our sway bar loose. Now we're going to go ahead and remove the lower shock bolt. The only thing that is keeping the spring in is our lower ball joint nut and the floor jack. So we've got some tension on our floor jack. Okay, take our nut loose on the lower ball joint. We'll go ahead and slowly lower this floor jack. You want to be careful that your jack stays in position. It doesn't jump out on you. These springs only compress uh, fully extended. They're not quite 14 inches and collapsed. They're 11 inches, so there's not a lot of compression there. Okay, go ahead and remove the factory spring. You want to be sure and clean this pocket. A lot of times there'll be dirt and debris inside of here where the spring rests, so we want to clean that out. Here you can see the deep pocket on the top and the end cut. There is a timing to them so they go in a certain way. This is looking at the top pocket up inside the cross member. You can see how it kind of has a D shape to it and you can see how the coil, the top of the coil spring fits into it. You can see where the end of the coil should be in this area here where the end of the pocket is on the bottom. We recommend just putting a light film of anti-seize on the end of the coil kind of helps you get it seated properly. Put a little bit on each end. Okay, we're ready to install the spring. Go ahead and make sure we have it timed correctly. And now we want to go ahead and put a little pressure on this lower control arm. We have the coil spring in position with the timing the way we want it. We're going to go ahead and put some more pressure on this jack and a lot of times you, you end up having to hold a little pressure on this spring as you're lifting it into position. So we'll go ahead and lift that up into place. Make sure your ball joint is coming down through the spindle. For safety we want to go ahead and get this nut started on here as quickly as we can so we've got that spring captured to where it can't jump out of there. We're going to go ahead and tighten up this lower ball joint. Okay, we're going to go ahead and check the torque on this lower ball joint. I'd like to see at least 180 foot-pounds on this one. And we want to make sure that our cutter pin hole lines up. You never want to back it off. You always got to go to the next tighter hole. Okay, now that we have the ball joint torqued, let's go ahead and install our cutter pin. Now we're going to go ahead and hook up the sway bar bracket to the control arm. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and tighten up the lower shock mount. Okay, so we've got our sway bar tight, our lower shock mount tight, our lower ball joint tight, springs in position. So we're going to go ahead and uh, drop our tie rod down and hook it up. Now we're going to tighten up this outer tie rod in. Now that we've snugged that down, let's go ahead and check the torque on it. It should be around 80 to 100 foot pounds. 
Okay, we'll go ahead and install our cotter pin. We always want to fold those over so they can't come out. So we've got our sway bar, our tie rod, shock mount, and ball joint. Spring is in position nicely. There is a hole in the bottom of the control arm. If you're unsure if the top might have jumped out, you can look up through the hole in the control arm and see that you're still in the pocket. We're ready to go ahead and install the tire. Now that we've got it back down on the ground, we're going to go ahead and check the torque. It's about 140 foot-pounds on this one. Okay, this completes the installation on the Super Steer coil springs. You'll want to take it for a little test run, settle the springs out, and have the alignment rechecked. We provide alignment specs as well as the instructions and all the tools required to do this job. And uh, this is John at Super Steer. I want to thank you for your time today.